Okay, so uh, let me welcome you back. Uh, I will be talking about the course called Basic 3D Animation, which is uh, titled, uh, the, the nomenclature used is SKANI101X. Now this, there was a question about why this SKANI and uh, what is this uh, significance of this short form. So that, just to explain you, this is a skill development course. Therefore, we have started a series under the acronym SK for that. And ANI meaning animation, therefore SKANI 101X. Uh, whenever we offer course on advanced animation and other things, we'll have SKNI 102 or 202 or 302 and uh, since so on and so forth. We also offered another course in the same series uh, of skill development, but it was based on architecture. Therefore, we titled it as SKARC. Uh, and that was SKARC 101. And uh, that was about architectural visualization. Nowadays, lots of architects um, get the request to create a walkthrough of their drawings. And not necessarily, it is good uh, always that architects spend their time in doing those walkthroughs. They are good at their, doing their drawings, but there should be some operator to convert those drawings into walkthroughs because that doesn't require much of architectural knowledge. So I had designed this course specifically with the target audience of non-architects who are good in computers and visualization. So we have found out that almost 30% uh, of the audience, uh, the participants who took my course, were able to uh, get out of the course, which is a huge number uh, compared to uh, the standard practice of uh, 10 to 8 to 10%. But uh, most importantly, I have seen that they are already assisting some architects in converting their drawings to architectural visualization. So that was one of the very nice uh, outcome of that. OK, uh, I started off with that acronym point. So we have SKANI, which is skill development in animation. We have SKARC, which is skill development in architecture. And next semester onwards, we are coming up with uh, skill development in gaming. So it will be called SKGAM. Uh, not to uh, repeat, but for gaming, uh, it would be a prerequisite to have the animation course, uh, the basics of Blender in place. Uh, although I hate to call a course with the name of the software, you know, that does, it goes against my ethics of my own ethics also that it should not be the software which should be taught. It should be the concept which should be taught. So we only had this nomenclature for our first course because we wanted to popularize Blender as a name. Now we have removed that. So all other courses now are called uh, 3D architectural visualization or uh, computer uh, gaming. So that would be the name of the course. It is incidental that we'll be teaching gaming using an open source tool called Blender. So, um, and the reason is that because we have open source software in our hand, after the course is done or during the course, whenever students want to practice their uh, concepts, it would be uh, essential for them to have access to a software. And with Maya or 3D Max, that is not possible. Although you have academic licenses, they are not possible to be carried home. So you have to do it only in the uh, colleges. Therefore, we chose Blender and that allows each and every participant to practice in their own space uh, at home, free of cost. So that's the whole logic behind this, um, this uh, thread of skill development uh, courses at IIT Bombay. Uh, and um, what I'm showing right now on screen is uh, some of the output of these students in the past who have uh, completed the course. The reason I'm showing you, and you can keep going uh, with the slides now without uh, waiting for my signal, because uh, you can see the diversity of uh, different objects. Uh, for example, we tell them to do a chair. Uh, we never tell them that it should have only uh, three rods at the back and uh, two armrests and all other things. And students are going in their own way of experimenting with modeling, texturing, lighting, trying various uh, materials and uh, various textures, lighting conditions, even in the form, they are experimenting a lot. That is the reason, so for example, the crown assignment has been explored by various people in various ways. 
and the beauty of the whole course is that because we have these open ended assignments uh, it is possible for participants to express in their own ways so for just pause here uh, so the assignment was pretty simple that you have to uh, get a donut as a basic shape uh, in 3d and uh, just pull some of the faces to make a crown so that was what i had told in the uh, in my lecture and then i left the lecture with a sentence that here is the assignment to create a crown now you go ahead and explore this thing in your own ways and you can use your own textures materials you want a gold crown or you want a iron crown or whatever metal you want to use but people uh, went ahead explored various options available on the web uh, searched for videos uh, found out how to create uh, the gold effect how to create uh, shining um, uh, jewels and all other things and started doing these things it didn't stop there what happened is that when somebody posted this the persons who were looking at the discussion forum submissions they are started asking that person how did you do that and i told i requested that person in fact that person is a teacher himself so i didn't know the, uh, for me it was just a name atek so i said okay dear atek can you explain and that person said okay let me know how to do that and i pointed him to uh, professor kannan's project of spoken tutorials how to create a spoken tutorial so that link i pasted on my discussion forum saying that here is a process of how to create a spoken tutorial if you are interested please do a small spoken tutorial about how you did this assignment and post it back onto the discussion forum for the benefit of others within 7 days that person did a wonderful job of a video of explaining all the nuances required for doing this and actually copied all the strategies of <laughs> creating a spoken tutorial for example present a outline up front in the video like what is the what is the learning uh, objective of this video uh, what is the uh, uh, software version i am using um, what will uh, so what are the stages and all that he did without actually me telling him it was only like taken up from the documentation of spoken tutorial of course first thing and also the videos which were all already available for him from my course so put together uh, that came up this triggered a series of submissions in that direction so suddenly people started exploring metals now because metals was not taught to them and they started exploring metals and uh, they created some smooth effect somebody was trying to show sharper effects and and things like that even even up to this point where they combined metal with uh, cloth and velvet and um, uh, matte finish uh, pearls with the glittering diamonds so all those things i am amazed at the fact that uh, participants are capable of so much and uh, we uh, we just need to have that trigger in them so that was uh, what i realized that uh, if we do provide that much of trigger the the output is amazing and uh, that is what we want to do at the end of the day every one of us wants to do that right so uh, in a nutshell Okay, go next what is it is there any other thing okay there are some yeah so assignment was create a chess piece of your choice and people created entire chess board and with various <laughs> various uh, styles of uh, i think yeah they added emotions to the chess board uh, all these things uh, why i am showing is that this has gone beyond the course um, and this is what i think is the biggest achievement of uh, the course called uh, skni 101x that it has gone beyond it look at this this is a uh, piece of art actually uh, the person has not only uh, modular uh, created a model of uh, uh, the chess piece but has added other dimensions like reflections uh, the cuts uh, you can actually feel the uh, the material that how shiny it is how soft it is or other things so this is i think according to the person here uh, anish anish from uh, calicut so anish is actually a, a, a content creator in the uh, emrc ha huh. so he educational media research center calicut so he is an employee of emrc and uh, he just kept on doing certain things amazing me with uh, various inputs he had not only that so when i wanted to scale up and there was a request from uh, nit calicut to have a course for them i requested anish that maybe you can go and talk to them and he obliged went there he gave a talk there and he has been providing constant support 
So the model which has evolved over a period of time is that uh, Sabir can't be a sufficient person to cater to the huge demand coming up every now and then. I, 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 so this is another pers uh, another submission from the architecture course uh, where they have tried to actually touch base all possible uh, options within uh, the architecture requirement like carpets and uh, leather and uh, a TV which is actually uh, emitting uh, video. Such kind of things also they have tried to do. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is another one. Uh, some basic ones. The point I wanted to make was uh, at three levels. So one is that, that is also very much uh, what I have received in the uh, box here. Uh, although there are only three papers here, but uh, I think if I uh, narrate these questions, uh, probably everyone uh, agrees to that question. So I'll just take it in uh, uh, the order which I feel is right. So this is a course on uh, 3D animation. So can you just show the course? We have started this course around two months back. Uh, I'm re-offering this course. But the important point to note here is that this course is offered right now in a self-paced mode, which means that the day you register on the course, you will see all the eight chapters in one go. So there is no timeline based delivery that every week after week we will be delivering some content. So all the chapters will be available on the first day itself. All the assignments will be available on the first day and also the quizzes which are the uh, assessment options also will be available on the first, first day itself. So when you register for the course and start looking at it, it is up to you how you want to finish it. You can take a call to finish it in two days weeks or months it's up to you and uh, as i keep telling uh, the students whenever i meet them it is just matter of uh, not watching one movie in a week and watching these videos instead and you should be able to finish this course in four weeks uh, because uh, typically a chapter consists of 40 to uh, 50 minutes of video content i expect another 40 to 50 minutes of uh, hands-on work uh, which is told in those videos and another 40 to 50 minutes of actually solving uh, assignment or a quiz whichever is associated in that particular chapter so it's that's all it takes for a chapter to be complete and uh, you can go ahead in that direction also uh, because MOOCs are uh, open-ended you can uh, take two questions in the quiz today and then take the rest of the quiz later on doesn't matter it is open so the question, first question here is that if this is the course, then what is the prerequisite for this course? Who can take this course? Uh, the answer to that is anybody who is well versed with computers and has a passion to learn a new thing is, uh, is a potential candidate for this course. Absolutely no prerequisite as such. Uh, people actually ask me, can my child take this? Uh, she is very much fond of animation. And um, I don't know, who is not fond of animation? That's a big question. So <laughs> most of us are. And uh, in fact, uh, whenever I ask this question, a uh, lot of people associate animation with cartoon, right? And the moment I say cartoon, a lot of people associate that with Tom and Jerry. Uh, uh, but uh, there are also other aspects of animation which we are trying to explore here. Unfortunately, one of our important website is not working right now, but you can just write down the address of that, which is called oscar.iitb.ac.in. That Oscar has nothing to do with the uh, uh, awards. This is about open source courseware animations repository. So uh, this website has a, uh, a bunch of uh, various animations in engineering which are freely downloadable and you can use them in your own uh, education uh, systems. But moreover, it also has a repository of Blender models required for physics and chemistry laboratories. So it has vernier caliper and it also has test tubes and beakers and all sorts of things. In addition, it also has a process of how you can download these models, how you can modify these models, and how you can create an animation of your own using these models. So entire process is explained there. But in order to actually do that, you will need some background of Blender. Therefore, use this course. So that's how I put it. You can just use this website. So about 
prerequisite no minimum age criteria uh, i i just leave it to you what what you feel is a minimum age for people to handle computers is is uh, is the only thing you can think of uh, otherwise there is no such thing now um, the second question is can every discipline uh, students from any discipline learn animation there are people who have used animation in various formats and various types and i'm going to show you two examples of that then second question is mostly hands on training will be effective uh, effective in this course are you supporting that yes we are supporting that uh, that is why there are hands on assignment in every chapter and you saw some results here uh, of course there is a discussion forum where people post something which is not there in assignment also sometimes i have received something which is uh, we had not asked for and people just out of their own curiosity or experimentation have been doing that and they just keep posting it now the trend has become that they challenge each other so they say okay can you do this and just two days back uh, there was a post from a student saying that can someone do a, a goody in 3d so the goody part was happening so they said okay can we try uh, fluttering of the cloth with the uh, goody thing uh, shown in 3d so yeah such things are happening what are the major application areas uh, of this 3d animation uh, where it can be applied or used yes i am going to show some of them uh, there is one more question uh, how to attend tomorrow session okay so i just skipped a uh, couple of uh, slides ahead by the way for people who are already enrolled and there are uh, 2700 students right now who are enrolled for this course and some of the remote center coordinators who are here are aware of it there are many remote center coordinators who are not aware that there are students in their own remote center who have enrolled and obviously because they don't know that uh, uh, this such a course is running and students are interested so uh, we have organized a aview session tomorrow at 2 o'clock 2 uh, to 3 uh, to answer some of the queries of the students who are already enrolled and for students who want to join and have some queries in their mind or for faculty members who are uh, who need some more uh, queries to be answered so all of you can make a note and that answers the second question here uh, i request you to conduct the session before 3:30 pm probably 2:30 to 3:30 well taken care of so uh, we will be uh, conducting this session tomorrow now uh, i have uh, two small agenda items here uh, one of the agenda items is uh, from the audience where i wanted to talk to uh, three people here uh, one is uh, uh, professor anand murthy where is he if you carefully look at him uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't come across uh, in uh, in uh, you can't think of that but in some sense of uh, scanny 101x uh, he's the student and i was the teacher unfortunately or fortunately and he met me saying that i took your course and i enjoyed it so i just wanted him I, to i yeah. took your course uh, at the earlier time not now uh, can you one x yeah yeah ah okay so uh, i was just interested in blender okay uh, and uh, i use blender on uh, slackware okay so, so i thought of experimenting on that So, yes so professor murthy is uh, very much interested in open source and he was trying to see how we can add blender to various things so when we were discussing about gaming uh, he just mentioned that i would be utilizing it uh, in his own way i have uh, professor nagappan here uh, yeah so maybe you can uh, so his uh, college um, also had lot of registrations for this uh, course and uh, i used to pester him a lot uh, asking what is happening with the students Th thanks sir uh, of course i took the uh, blender course first time when you launched it and uh, because it was instructor led i was not able to take a few quizzes in between and because of that anyway i got the certificate uh, at last uh, submitting few assignments but uh, i couldn't uh, do up to the maximum but i suggested that to my students and when i took up uh, elective game programming last year i made all the students to register in your courses and uh, i would like to mention about many of them have got the certificates and uh, good grades and i would like to mention about one particular student who was yogeshwar and uh, uh, that student had lot of arrears in all the subjects but uh, he got interest in this he took up this course and uh, one day he came and told me sir i have cleared game programming as well and uh, in the first attempt and i have got uh, uh, blender certificate as well as this 
3D architectural visualization certificate. Yeah, yeah. And a similar uh, student actually I met him and I, I maintain a blog uh, on my website where I have uh, uh, posted a uh, document about him. So his name was Romy and same thing happened. He called me one day saying that, sir, I have arrears in other courses, but I am interested in animation. Can I take it? Uh, I am happy to report that now he has cleared all his backlogs. <laughs> and uh, not only that, he is one of the uh, better speakers in the college now. He is from Loyola College, Chennai. And uh, now he is one who goes out of the college and uh, propagates about Blender and talks. And he has, in fact, gone into the mentoring stage. So he was my teaching assistant. Uh, he is right now teaching assistant when I am teaching this course. It's the fourth time now. So uh, yeah, so there are uh, some kind of, so you can show the second success story maybe. E yeah, so Suyash, uh, Suraj Varun, go down and uh, just go down. There is a video this guy made. So, uh, yeah, play that. This person also uh, learned Blender from the course and then later on uh, started using it for creating small videos. And when I met him last, I said, what are you using this for? So he said, uh, sir, I'm uh, very happy now because this supports my uh, weekend pocket money now. I'm not dependent on my parents anymore. <laughs> I just uh, create some small videos like this and um, which are required for the gaming industry and uh, I make my uh, uh, pocket money out of this. So people are using it for various things. Just stop this and just show math amazing last one. Sir, so that Yogeshwar told, uh, we have showed him Asla. life. We have given him life and uh, one day he said, I, I met Samir sir and uh, I, I have got my uh, things so clear. Thank you so much sir. Right. Um, uh, this is one of the projects which was done by a uh, couple of students who completed the Blender course and what they did was uh, creating a game for school children, play that. Uh, and uh, you see this maze which is created in Blender and uh, the entire game logic is also built in Blender where the students have to stand in front of the uh, particular computer. Are you playing it? Yeah, yeah. If you stand in front of the computer and computer has a Kinect associated with it, so uh, after the T pose is scanned, you can see that Warley type of uh, drawing there in the corner. And now, if you bend down, the uh, the Android character will start moving on the track. And you uh, want to turn right, so take the left hand out. And uh, after you do that, the Kinect will recognize that, uh, convert it into signal, go to Blender game engine. Blender game engine will tell Blender. And what you see on the screen will be uh, this kind of animation. And finally, you'll be able to play the game. We saw that this works very nice. In fact, uh, some of the village schools uh, are using this for as an attraction item for people to come back after the lunch hour because most of the time because of the lunch hour people don't turn back so I have some friends who are uh, using this escape yeah so in a in short I wanted to share that uh, there are multiple uh, avenues where blender can be used and there are people who are using it for different things blender has been also very popular in uh, commercial filmmaking nowadays uh, couple of advertisement uh, makers are preferring blender over Maya and max simply because of the cost factor and uh, very soon I can see uh, even commercial filmmaking converting into this but the biggest industry currently which can employ engineers with the background of graphics and animation is uh, the gaming industry and therefore we are coming up this uh, with this basic course in uh, gaming and uh, since uh, this course is a mandatory or a prerequisite for that I would request all of you to keep that uh, document which I have given uh, I hope everyone has a copy of that uh, if someone doesn't have it, you can uh, ask me or Amit, who is around. Uh, ah, yeah, he's in that corner and I'm in this corner. So if you have, uh, if you need a copy of that, you can just take it and uh, put it up on the uh, notice board for students. And uh, we would be having this regular practice of having the AVU sessions. So in case you miss tomorrow's, doesn't matter. We'll have it every week. And uh, we have tried to in 
encourage participation uh, in, in these courses by using other mediums such as uh, we have a Facebook page of our course and we have a WhatsApp group of the coordinators who are doing it across. So these measures have helped me uh, actually push the uh, passing percentage from what was 9% when I offered it first to almost 30% uh, when I offered it third time. So uh, this is how uh, things are gradually changing and uh, like I said more than that I'm more happy happy to see uh, some kind of submissions which you just saw right now. So thank you very much. I hope I have uh, answered most of the questions and I also kept on time uh, for uh, Professor Kandan to start his very interesting session on clickers. Um, we, we had, uh, our team had a question about uh, gaming mainly. Uh, they wanted, they are teaching some virtual reality also. Would that be, I want to know if that's part of gaming from your perspective and uh, they want to know if Blender can be used to build some simple, very simple virtual reality kind of, uh, you know, walkthroughs or interactions yeah. or both. Yes, uh, uh, I have uh, used, uh, one of the teams here has uh, been working with NID Bangalore. Uh, where we were working on the uh, temples of, um, I'm not getting that name, but I think temples uh, in South India where, uh, so we have uh, Blender being an open source thing and based on Python, uh, that makes it, makes the life easy of a lot of people. So we had VR uh, included in that, we had augmented reality uh, with Blender. So in fact, one of the series of uh, my summer internship wish list used to be uh, tracking with various uh, hardware things or software things. So virtual reality with this. So we uh, also, uh, so we had a virtual reality walkthrough of that temple created using Blender where the model was Blender and then we exported uh, the 3D um, vertices for the walkthrough and uh, we had good results of that. So we have that, uh, we have already done that. Yeah, that's possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you.